So the thing that I'm working on here, this is a rubber mold of something I owned once but I then um, sold. It was a fire screen and I took a rubber mold of it. And what's sitting in the rubber mold, what this is, is um, this. Glue gun sticks. I melt them in a um, pot on the stove on medium heat until it just goes all runny. And then I pour it in and quite frankly, it's now set. You can pull it out. Mm -mm -mm. And we have, put it on the cutting mat, and we have that. Now we just have to use our X-Acto knife on the cutting mat, go around all the edges, and voila, we have what we need. I did the outside in resin, but it was very hard. The thing with this is that it's quite pliable. You can stretch and move it if you want. You can change the shape of the circle wind it up tighter or whatever you like add bits i think that was a gold idea of mine to work with glue gun stick glue hmm there you go and yes i am melting it on an old stove with an older saucepan let's cut these up I had this thought because the actual resin you can only buy in bulk plus the shipping of $40 etc costs about $400 it doesn't last very long it does go off and um, that's just too expensive for me so let's run with this and you certainly don't want to burn yourself with this. It's very hot, it's very sticky, it'll stick to your skin. You know what a glue gun glue burn is like, nasty. So be very, very careful. My hope is that it will re-glue, re-melt the side where I've already put some. I can fill up the holes in the mist, mist bits. It's fairly pliable. And when this sets, does actually come off the pan very easily and any bits that you um, have left sorry I'm talking funny because I am concentrating the heat will remelt what's underneath and stick to it is my hope. Okay. Ow. Extra bits, just put it back in the pan to remelt. Very economical. I happen to manage to buy the packets from the guy up bulk set of 24 they're normally two dollars he didn't give me any discount he's probably hurting as much financially as the rest of us so um 24 dollars for 10 uh, 12 packets
This is the easiest thing. Maybe I should melt it in a coffee pot. I don't know. Then I can pour it easier. I'll work on it. It's the first time I've done this, by the way. So I'm learning while you are. Time to go back for a remelt. I have said in a previous video that the things you learn as a child will help you with most of the things you want to do as an adult. And this is just like looking with toffee or icing a cake. It's no different. Yeah, when my parents made me do the cooking, I hated it, thought it was a waste of my time. I'm not a girl, I shouldn't cook, but quite honestly, Nobody has any set gender jobs anymore. We can all do anything. And that's why I like my daughters are so very, very clever. They believe they can do anything. And I show them they can, and they turned out marvelous, marvelous children. There you go. If I leave that stuck on there, it will actually cool down, set, and then I can probably pull everything off in one go. I also burnt my finger. Quite honestly, I need to be ashamed of myself. I've run it under the um, tap for 10 minutes like you should. Um, put it on some ice. I am a medic and as a volunteer with the Order of St. John. And quite frankly, I was teaching burns um, on Tuesday night. I should know better. And now we wait for it to cool down, this is fine. There's a dip here, but it doesn't matter. Once this is flat on the wall, it uses less if you leave a dip. And it's, it, I managed to pour it like that. I think that is pretty cool. I filled in some little holes, and you can also use your glue gun. The glue gun to reheat an area and fill in a hole, add something to the other side. You can even put lettering on if you want. There's a crest in the middle here, and if you want to put your own name on it, you could. All you have to do is find something by the silicon rubber molding. This is very thin because I poured it over thinly, and then I've used plaster or Paris to back it. Um, so this is all very thin, not using too much, but you see the plaster of Paris fills in the back. Always be economical. Partly because I'm cheap. <laughs> Partly because, well, why use all the resources that someone else might need in the world when you can do with less? Make do, use less. Walk if you don't need to. Take a car. Have some consideration for the rest of the world. It does take ages to cool down. This is still tacky. I don't want to put my finger on there. I'll burn it again. I've had enough of that today. Thank you very much. Ow. Here we go, the great unveiling. Let's have a look at what's going to happen here. None too sure. Worried about this because it's still hot. It's still warm underneath. I don't want it to stretch like it's doing. Okay, gone too far now to go back. Hey! Look at that, plastic lace. Oh my lord. Impressive. That is so impressive. I am really impressed. Gosh, yay. 
And now we work with this with our exacto knife and we cut around using a cutting mat. Cut around the edges. Yay. And all of this goes back in the pot for the next melt. Now there will also be variations in thickness here where I want it to be flat and on the other side it's certainly not flat it's all got lumpy bits and bubbles so you can actually shave it from behind until you get it where you want. I'm going to work on this and we'll bring it back to you. I'm a little bit worried about ruining the pan because it's a non-stick pan and I'm hoping I'm hoping it's all just going to come out. I think maybe I've ruined the pan. It is not coming out. I have to admit that it got stuck good and for all, but the way to get it out is to rewarm the pan until it becomes slightly liquid and wipe it out with an old rag. Well, there you go. I've tidied it up a lot with my stay sharp knife. And then I've run a flame all around the edges, which actually cleans up all the little stringy bits that you get everywhere. There's stringy bits. Stringy bits, it's full of stringy bits. Anyway, all of that has been um, cut away from here and I can remelt that to make another spiral to go on this side because I've got one already on that other side over there. So. We'll see how we go. Now, all I'm doing is using my glue gun to fill in and create just a leaf or two, um, like this one here. I just created that from this area here by filling it with glue gun. It's a quieter, it's a lovely pastime, quite frankly. So I've just done that one, this one, and then I've done that one. If it comes out a little messy, don't worry. What we then do is put it back, reflood the messy area with fresh glue. Push it in and it will um, set itself into the mold and glue itself to the back of the other. Ah, oh, such a mess. String. I can make my own Halloween cobwebs that way. Anyway, we're doing the extra pieces because they've got to come over here. I have this one because I made it and I realized I didn't really want to put it there. I realized it would look nicer going there. So I just had to um, use the, make the reverse one. And here it is. Yeah, it's got a nice leaf shape. It's just got lots of overflow to cut off. Okay, so we're just having an interim look. I've put it up with blue tack and it's not painted white yet, but let's have a look at how it's facing up. And it's also not in the center. I can see that now, but it's just up there with blue tack until we need to make over this side here, another curl that goes in the reverse and then two over here. And that's gotta be in the middle, of course, and it's 
going to be very pretty. Hmm. Nicely done. 